We've been talking weaponry in Call of Duty World War II as of recently for a number of reasons. One, because there were a bunch of updates to weapons as of recently. Two, because there's a lot of stuff that still can be seen for some good class setups. And three, because there's a large influx of players right around this time, simply because the Christmas time and holidays warrant a large number of people ending up getting the game at this point rather than, say, at the very launch of it. So, while they might be a little bit behind you and I in terms of the grinding, it's something that we're still going to presumably see a large influx of new players coming into the game. And with that said, whether you're new or you're somebody that has been grinding out the game since launch, I figured now would be a great time to give you three of my favorite class setups that I use on an absolute day-to-day -day basis. We'll rip the lobbies to shreds and just have a great time with these. So, in a little bit more casual of a fashion, we're gonna be giving you guys some best class setups here at this one and giving you guys a little heads up on some stuff you can maybe try out if you haven't done so already or if you are somebody new that is coming into the game just at this very point for the first time, these are some weapons that won't actually require you to do all that much to get them, and then once you end up getting them, you can absolutely shred with them. So that's it, we're going to be covering in this video an infantry class, an airborne class, and a mountain division class, pretty much a rifle, a submachine gun, and a sniper class setup, one of each of the main classifications that I primarily use. Occasionally, I'll go over to, say, a shotgun or an LMG class setup, and yesterday, we talked about the best LMG, at least in my books, right now, and honestly, it's probably a top five, six weapon in the game, also to me, but we talked about that one yesterday, so I won't get repetitive here on this one too much and give you guys something that I literally just just talked about yesterday. If you want to check out that class setup, I'll leave that link in the description below and put an annotation on screen so you guys can just follow that over and check that out for yourself. But that said, once again, we're going to be talking about an infantry, airborne, and mountain division class setup. So let's jump right into it. The first thing that I want to talk about is the STG, the rifle within this one. And I think that I have actually touched on this one before, but in the sake of keeping everything more so centralized and focused, and because it is probably my favorite class setup in that rifle classification, I'm going to be putting it in here this one, but the other two, I know we haven't seen in any way, shape, or form in any previous videos, but a quick recap of that one is the STG with the infantry class setup. Now, for those of you guys, once again, that know how I roll, I like to have these divisions ranked up as much as possible to take advantage of those perks. So with infantry, if you have max rank on this, you also get an extra attachment slot. You get, of course, the infantry bayonet, which is just standard. You also get the ability to have extra magazines, and you have faster strafing movement speed when aiming down sight, which is all beautiful and the SDG's mobility speed which unfortunately may be the only real downfall of the weapon it's not the greatest so if you have the STG ranked up with infantry ranked up you can strafe back and forth with relative ease and it's something you won't really notice all that much as a deterrent as you would if you did not have that equipped now on top of the SDG itself what I rock for the attachments to make this thing I think a powerhouse is quick draw high caliber grip and steady aim which this gives away once again the basic training that we use that being primed to add another Another attachment slot onto our weapon here on top of the already granted extra attachment slot from infantry division but quick draw allows you to get that weapon up faster high caliber allows you to increase that headshot lethality which of course is beautiful it takes off another shot needed to kill as if you didn't have it it would take one extra now grip allows you to have less recoil which the STG is okay in the recoil department but it is something with grip it definitely makes it a lot better and steady aim this actually gives it I think that ability to rival other weapons in close quarters if you have to get in those situations. If somebody rounds a corner and you have to panic shoot at them, steady aim is going to allow that hip fire to be a little closer and that spread to be smaller so that you have a better chance of getting off a pinpoint precise shot with wherever your crosshairs are on that hip fire. Now on top of this, once again, we have primed as the basic training, of course, and then we also, just for having it there, the machine pistol and the frag grenade. The frags I'll usually try and calculate out where somebody will be and I'll try and just Kobe it in there, but the machine pistol itself I won't use all that much because the ST STG not only has a decent amount of ammo with infantry ranked up, but it's also something that just rips through and the reload speed isn't all that bad, so I don't have to have many pinch situations where I have to jump in and out of using one or the other. So it's something that I like to have just as backup, but I don't really ever use. Now, moving over into the second class setup here with this one, this one now more so moving over into the SMG and the airborne classification. This one's gonna be focused around the Type 100, which statistically might not be the best SMG SMG, maybe a lot of people still like to use the PPSH, or as of recently, maybe the Sten, maybe the MP40, but it's one that the Type 100, I feel, is just incredibly reliable. I feel like all these other SMG 
RPGs have these attributes that make them very good in one classification, but I feel like the Type 100, though maybe a little bit lower than each of those top tiers for each specific weapon, I think the Type 100 is probably just the most all-around, well-rounded SMG in World War II. So it's always one that I come back to, it's always one that I essentially just default to if I don't want to use something that I'm going for camo challenges for. But the Type 100, I rock this with Airborne naturally, simply because it just falls in that classification perfectly, and of course, it is something that I like to be able to run and gun. This is definitely my run and gun class by far. So on the Type 100, I'll rock Quick Draw, Steady Aim, and Extended Max. Now, once again, this gives away that we have Primed on this because you don't get that extra attachment slot with Airborne, so we have to throw in an extra attachment slot via Primed. Now, Quick Draw, once again, is massively huge for these sorts of gunfights because having that leg up, that Quick Draw on your weapon is going to allow you to have that, hopefully, first shot and get that extra edge over your opponent in that one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Steady Aim is going to allow you to hip fire a lot more precisely compared to if you did not have it on. And of course, SMGs already have a naturally better hip fire spread, but it's something that if you can even make that smaller so that it's even more pinpoint precise, that's always nice as well. Now, you're never going to have it just be a steady, constant beam that you get hip fire, like, say, the chainsaw from Call of Duty Ghosts, in which that's only hip fire and it's very accurate. You're never going to have it like that one, but Steady Aim at least makes this at least a little bit nicer. Now, on top of that, once again, extended mags. I always like to just have extended mags on this weapon because of the fact that it allows me to not have to reload as much. Now, of course, that's something that could be custom tailored to something that you either like or don't like, and if you want to switch it out, that's totally cool. But extended mags for me, I think, is something that not only allows me to have more time in between each reload, but it also compensates for the fact that I can't necessarily get those extra magazines like I would with infantry division, to which extended mags gives you a little bit more on top of your reserves and of course a little bit more in your starting magazine as well so it gives a little bit of a middle ground I think here between this and I don't have to then put on forage to get more ammunition but more so it just allows me to have that more comfort of ammunition and the ability to not have to reload every five seconds now as with the last class setup we end up having that is something in which I rock the machine pistol and the frag grenade machine pistol not necessarily all that much simply because once again I usually just stick to the guns of the type 100 the primary and the frag grenade, I'll once again try and calculate out where a player may be if it's something that I know there's a group of players, say, on a B flag or something like that, or they round to the corner and they've been there all game, I can just throw the grenade, hopefully get a kill off of it, but if I don't, well, it's okay. But that said, that is going to move us over into the third and final class setup I want to talk about here today, that being the sniping class, the Mountain Division, the Car 98K is what I use here at this one. Absolutely love this thing. This is going to require you to end up ranking up your Mountain Division up until Prestige 1. But like we mentioned a long while back, right before the game launched and right as the game launched, I should say, the nice part about how these Division Prestige weapons work is that you can go at your own pace here for this. Essentially, if you snipe or use the Mountain Division, only, you can probably end up unlocking this by rank 20, 25, 30, instead of having to go up until like 45 and 50, where presumably it would be a higher unlock if it was not tied to that division. So all you have to do is prestige your mountain division once and you unlock the car 98k. But once you end up having this, once again, I will throw this in with the mountain division and make this my sniping class setup. Now with that, I'll end up putting on ballistic calibration and rapid fire for some added stability, but also for the ability to end up popping off shots a little faster than, say, if it was not there. This offers a little bit more if you're a quick shooter, a sharp shooter in that aspect as well, so that you can end up not restricting yourself from seeing, say, an enemy right next to somebody else. You can pop them off in quick succession, and it won't really have too much blowback on you unless they have a perfect shot at you. But that said, I'm also not necessarily the most comfortable with just a sniper, and a lot of the times I'll be in engagements in which it's not going to be suited just for a pistol. So instead of rocking primed on on this class setup, I end up running Rifleman, which allows you to take a second primary weapon, similar to how we ended up seeing with Overkill in previous years, but the only thing is you can't have attachments on this secondary primary, which at least that's how I remember it. I don't recall seeing anything in my create a class menu, which I can throw on an attachment for, but nonetheless, even still, this is something that I will once again default back to my go-to SMG, the Type 100. Previously, I played around with having the bar whenever that was still a meta and OP weapon, but since it's not not necessarily one of the greatest at the very moment, I still will just put on my default 
SMG that I think is great in all situations. So that said, I can fall back onto this if the car 98K is something that I have somebody right in front of me or I'm rounding a corner. I once again won't really want to round a corner with a sniper, a single bolt action, because if I miss that shot, I'm dead. But if I have an SMG, then I have the chance to take that gunfight and then I can end up getting in these sniping positions in which I can pick people off at long ranges and I have that advantage because of the car 98K. Now again, I will rock the frag grenade for simply the same reason that I end up doing on the other class setups that we talked about with this one, but that rounds out that sniping class and it's one that I absolutely love and use on a very regular basis whenever I go and snipe. So that said though, that is going to conclude the three class setups that I think are my absolute favorites and also some that I think that you guys can definitely flourish and have a great time in World War II with. So that said, whether or not you're brand new with the game as of getting it for the holidays or if you are somebody that has been with the game like me since the very beginning, that's totally cool and I think that whatever the scenario, I think you can absolutely shred with these class setups. These are my go-to, these are some of my favorites in the game, and that I use consistently and for a reason, simply because I enjoy having these at my disposal and I enjoy how well I do with them. So I want to share this with you guys, give you my thoughts on this and give you my recommendations for any class setups you guys may want to try out. So as always, if you guys try these out, make sure you tweet me or give me your thoughts in the comments on what you think of these, how you did with them, whatever it may be. Make sure you guys let me know because I love hearing your feedback on these. I like to share my class setups and if it can help somebody out, that actually makes it so worth it. So let me know your thoughts. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. We're on that road to 100,000 subscribers. We're so, so close. And of course, if you guys want to stay up to date with anything regarding Call of Duty World War II, best class setups, tips, tricks, news, information, breakdowns, leaks, anything like that, we got you covered here up on the channel. So if any of that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. but practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said, out of the way, hope you guys had a fantastic day and hopefully you guys have a fantastic holiday with your friends and family. I truly wish you all nothing but the best and I want to thank you guys also so much for the support over the year. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic holiday and I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. Take care and peace.